and welcome to another episode of the Government Transformation Show, the podcast for public sector changemakers. I'm your host, Sam Birchall, Senior Reporter here at Government Transformation Magazine, and I'm joined today by Steve Hollier and Alberto Villari from Informatica. So we have a great discussion about adaptive data governance, how it can help government departments to improve data quality, create efficiencies, and to unlock the full potential of their data assets. We also take a look at how they can actually measure the effectiveness of this approach um, and much, much more. So yeah, hope you enjoy. So welcome, Steve and Alberto. Great to have you both on the Government Transformation Show. How are you doing this afternoon? Doing great, thank you. Thanks, Good, thank you, Sam. Excited to be here today and to talk about um, adaptive data governance and how Informatica can support the programme. Yeah, cool. Yeah, really excited to chat. It's uh, obviously a lot to talk about. It's a big, to- big topic. Um, but as ever, let's start with some introductions to get a bit of context on how yourselves and Informatica work with public sector. Um, so Steve, Steve, I'll come to you first. Could you perhaps tell us a bit about your role at Informatica and your area of expertise? Sure. So hello, everyone. My name is Steve Hollier. I'm an Informatica Cloud Data Governance Specialist. I primarily look after the UK public sector space and UK uh, financial sector space within well, obviously the UK, actually. But I also support Benelux and Nordics. And coming along with me today is a gentleman called Alberto. And Alberto support is one of my team and supports the Benelux region. Alberto, would you like to say hello? Yeah, thank you, Steve. So hi, everyone. Excited to be here. My name is Alberto Vida. I'm based in Brussels. I'm supporting the Benelux uh, uh, area and um, joined Informatica two years ago, coming from a field experience in delivering data governance projects to big organizations. Great stuff. And yeah, thank you both for for taking the time today. As I mentioned, so we're talking about adaptive data governance. Um, So what do we mean when we talk about this? What does this mean to Informatica? Yeah, well, I I can start by by the definition, uh, because adaptive data governance is a, is a model where flexibility to the approach of data governance uh, uh, determines a way of uh, helping organizations to navigate through the challenges of data governance, but at the same time not fixing uh, blocks, roadblocks, or or you know red tapes too much and being able to adapt to their day-to-day challenges. And this particularly comes hand, handy when, when it comes to big complex organization and public sector definitely is. Dynamic is the, is the keyword for, for adaptive data governance. And at the same time, big organizations need to undertake this path in any case because they need to guarantee the interoperability of their data across different departments and the data ecosystems. What is your take on that, Steve? Yeah, and that's absolutely right, Alberto. And actually, um, adaptive data governance is coming up quite a lot in a number of government departments that I talk to at the moment. It actually helps to promote data transparency and accountability within the different departments. What we're trending to find is that it establishes a clear data management policy and for the procedures as well, and actually creates oversight and auditing capabilities. What this does mean is that government departments can better manage their data and ensure that it's being used in a responsible and ethical manner, making sure that the right people are using the data at the right time. We're also finding that adaptive data governance can play a critical role in a- enabling some of our public sector organisations to unlock the full value of the data asset, understand how the data is being used, where it resides, improve service delivery, drive greater innovation and efficiency across their operations. So it can be really helpful within the UK government sector space, which is why I'm probably finding it coming up time and time again. Yeah, and you mentioned a few kind of hot topics right there. So I guess managing complex data ecosystems, promoting data transparency, accountability, Um, improving service delivery, driving greater innovation and efficiency um, across operations. So definitely all key areas or or challenges that public sector organisations are really looking at tackling right now. Um, So yeah, keen to delve in some of those in a bit more detail. But first, I'm curious to get a feel of where Informatica kind of sits on this topic. So obviously you're co-hosting the roundtable on adaptive data governance at our Government Transformation Summit. Why is this topic of particular interest to to you guys at the moment? Well, the first thing to highlight actually is, is that we, with Informatica, has a number of data governance um, customers sitting in UK government already. And so they're talking to us about it. So the fact that they're talking to us about it Uh, means that we're addressing some of the challenges or concerns they have. But importantly, we have to recognise that Informatica is a leader in data management solutions. um, And we see it as a critical role that 
it's really important how data plays in enabling government agencies to deliver on their missions and provide evicted services to the citizens. By helping government departments implement adaptive data governance programs, then what we find is Informatica can contribute to the success of these agencies and support their important work. Secondly, Informatica sees adaptive data governance as a key enabler of digital transformation, something that's coming up time and time again in the public sector space at the moment. As governments increasingly adopt new technologies, for example, cloud or what the new term we're hearing is polycloud solutions yeah. and want to implement new processes to better serve their citizens, it becomes more important than ever to ensure that data is managed in a way that is flexible, responsive and can support the government department's innovations. Informatica is committed to supporting government agencies in their effort to improve not only data quality, but data security and compliance to regulations. Adaptive data governance is a critical tool in achieving these objectives and Informatica is really proud to be at the forefront of this important area of innovation. At Informatica, we believe we have a platform that supports adaptive data governance, and this is a vital component of any modern government. We're excited to be helping our government departments navigate this important area of data management and achieve better services to its citizens. Yeah, really interesting. And I guess kind of delving straight in, I suppose, but what are some of the key challenges that you've seen government departments face when implementing data governance and, and more importantly, I guess, how can adaptive data governance really help to address some of those obstacles? Um, yeah, yeah but definitely what we experience so far in big organizations and government, governmental big institutions like that are typically four big groups of challenges. The first one is the seal of data. So this organization has data stored in a, in a uh, in data uh, silos, in data structures that are very de departmental and uh, and fragmented, segregated. So it's very difficult to to, uh, to transfer and, and, and interconnect this data. The other big challenges are the fragmented policies. If you think of a government and think of the different ways that they might use personal data uh, in education rather than policy enforcement, rather than healthcare. So the same concept, personal data, has totally different policies in the way they are used by these, um, these entities, these departments. And then uh, limited resources. Typically, government doesn't have enough resources or traction to invest a lot in these new uh, you know, technologies or, or data management. So this is also a limit that we, we need to overcome to support these organizations. And last but not least is the cultural resistance that mm -hmm. is everywhere private and public sector, but uh, in these cases, you know, silo data are, are governed by, you know, silo uh, sometimes mentalities. So this also is, is, a, is a challenge that we need to tackle. What do you think, Steve? Yeah, and I agree, Alberto. And one of the things I always talk about is, is when, I, when to make data governance sticky. And a lot, a lot of customers ask, well, how do I make data governance sticky? <laughs> it becomes an obligatory requirement to drive things forward, but I've got to try and make it sticky within departments. And I always say, think big, but start small. Pick programs that are going to really work for you um, and give some kind of uh, business requirement or outcome. And then what you'll find is, is that it's the old adage, if anybody's watched the film if you build it they will come if you can build it and show it and show the success then actually you'll find that other businesses will come on board to support it and what we found is is that Informatica can help to address a lot of the challenges that Alberto has highlighted by providing a platform that supports a flexible and agile approach to governance you it can constantly change to the business needs and priorities so you're always going back to make sure and reflect on what you've done already which of course government is constantly changing mm -hmm. what this does all also allow us to do, Sam, is approach or help to break down silos by enabling data to be shared and integrated more effectively across different departments. A few on the call might actually hear something called the DSP or the data sharing platform, which comes up quite a lot within the UK government space at the moment. It's something that we're asked about time and time again. How can we let people know what data we have? It, it will help to ensure that policies and standards are aligned and enforced consistently, even as business and needs and priorities evolve. For example, what data can be used and who is using it. Mm -hmm. Additionally, one of the other things to think about is adaptive data governance can help to make more effective use of limited resources by prioritizing government measures based on a business needs and risk. So if we look at the facts, we often say to customers, they give us the 80-20 rule. If those of you who haven't heard the 80-20 rule, we find that a number of our customers talk to us around that spending 80% of their time looking for and only time, sorry, 80% of their time looking for the data 
and only 20% of the time actually using that data. That's quite a bad ratio. What you want to do is actually make it enable them to find data a lot quickly, quickly so that they can spend more time actually using the data to drive those initiatives forward. And what we've tried to do, and one of the things we've implemented in a number of our UK government se sector spaces, is actually imagine being able to tell a data consumer that's saying, where is my data? That they have a marketplace that they can go and shop for it, rather than just being told, yes, we have it, but we don't know where it is. So these are really important concepts and really good ways of breaking down the challenges. Yeah, no, all really, really interesting points there. And kind of building, I guess, on, on, on some of these challenges, I think another key challenge is around kind of retaining data quality. And that obviously feeds into government's ability to get the most from data, to obtain the best insights, and essentially just use it as effectively as possible. Um, with that in mind, how can adaptive data governance help government departments to improve data quality and, and reduce errors in data processing? Yeah, that, and that's another great question, Sam, and something we're being asked about a lot. How do we improve our data quality metrics? Because obviously, a lot of us are wanting to use AI and you do reporting structures. But actually, AI is based on data. If you're using AI, you've got to give it good data because if you give it bad data, it's going to produce bad outcomes or bad mm. results. And that's what nobody wants. So what we look at is how can adaptive data governance actually help in these particular areas? Well, firstly, we were, we were going to establish clear data quality metrics. Adaptive data governance enables government departments to set clear data metrics that align with their business needs and services and objectives. By defining and monitoring these metrics, Departments can then identify data quality issues early on and take corrective actions to ensure data accuracy. So basically what that means is we're feeding date correct data into those AI engines and getting it out rather than finding out that the result is late, later or too, too late down the program. We also find that providing better data access and visibility means that adaptive data governance can provide the access to data across organizations. What this does is allow departments to identify data inconsistencies and discrepancies and take corrective actions to improve the data quality as part of it too. Other things it sort of looks at is encouraging, um, encouraging collaboration and accountability. By actually understanding what information they've got and how it's being used, it can foster that collaboration accountability amongst the stakeholders involved in data management. By involving all the relevant data stakeholders in data governance processes and departments, you can ensure that everyone is working towards the same goals and there's a clear accountability for data quality across all the organization, which is really quite important too. Then we can look at another thing. We've also got improving data integration. By using data governance, we can help improve data integration across different systems and applications. We can bring the right data and link the right data together. We can make sure that data is integrated and consistent across the organizations and the departments can reduce errors and improve their data quality as part of it. Overall, adaptive data governance can provide government departments with the tools and processes needed to improve that needed to improve their data quality and reduce errors in data processing. And that's really quite important. We're trying to help departments to improve their services, get better and informed decisions and achieve their mission objectives. So that's how it can help, Sam. Mm, yeah. And um, I'm really interested to hear, I guess, how Informatica's solution can support not only adaptive data governance, but onwards to an emerging trend that we're hearing more and more about, which is uh, data observability, which if I manage to say it, because it's a tricky one. <laughs> <laughs> but Alberto, perhaps you could you could speak a bit more on this. Yeah, absolutely. So think about all these good things that Steve just uh, mentioned and explained, and imagine how you would coordinate and, and, and monitor the, the behavior of data in real time. So you would need really to have a, a way to track and monitor the, the, the KPIs of data in real time across the data landscape they, they travel through, right? So data... Observability is a concept that refers to the ability to observe, measure, and analyze the behavior of data in real time across your landscape, organization, or set of systems. And, um, and also including in this uh, map, think about the processes so that you can easily connect what is going wrong with where is going wrong and who are the people involved in this process. And you can start triggering uh, remediation initiatives almost in real time. So by the moment you decide to use a new data collection, new data set to 
feed the new service, you start understanding the, the behavior of this data as they happen. You cannot stop the world and say, okay, let's do check what <laughs> if everything is okay and then start again. The world keeps running and then you have to be able to adapt and monitor in real time to the new services you're going to provide. So this, of course, requires the right data enablers, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Right, Steve. Yeah, and, and you're right, Alberto. And the one thing we can think about is, and you asked how Informatica helps in that, we actually provide a comprehensive set of tools and technologies that enables these departments to implement effective data observability. I can't say it now, Sam. It's, <laughs> it's, in, it's such a mouthful, and it, I've tried it so many times, but... <laughs> Only the Italian here can say observability. <laughs> That's because you look at it in that way, Alberto. Um, some of the examples of how we can support it is from um, Informatica's Cloud Data Governance and Catalog, or some people will know it as CGC, Cloud Data Governance and Cataloging for short. It enables organizations to not only discover, so we've talked about discovering their data assets across a multitude of ecosystems, be on-prem or in cloud, but also catalog it and profile the assets across those wide systems and platforms. And what it also allows you to do is create, and I know Alberto's mentioned this in the background, is trace lineage. So understand their data flows across a technology landscape too. Mm. What this does enable the organizations to do is to gain a complete view of their data assets. And then going back to some of the data quality, ensure accuracy and reliability of their data. Yeah, and it'll be really interesting to see how that becomes, I guess, increasingly important, as, as you both said, to see organisations that really want to unlock the, the full potential of their data assets. Um, but let's talk about efficiency. How can adaptive data governance help government agencies to really improve the efficiency of their data management processes? Well, this is really interesting because this comes up quite a lot. And we've seen this in a number of surveys. So the IDC survey, for instance, that did a review of, of CDOs fairly recently, of that, they actually found that only 20 27% of data practitioners actually completely trust their data. That's, that's pretty poor, actually. Right. And then we look at the, we're finding that to trust, when it moves, data moves from its particular origin or first create, the further it moves, the data degrades, so the quality of it gets worse and worse. And what we're also finding, so back to that thing that we talked about before, we're finding that 30% of time can be spent on non-value add tasks. So poor data quality, fixing those, um, finding the data, fixing the problems around data to provide to the engines in the background. Those are quite big numbers appearing in there. And then what we're finding is, is that when a company or an organization then adopts adaptive data governance, it can help those departments to improve their efficiency of data management. And there's a few ways you can start looking at it. So if we start with just streamlining workflows, what we find is you can use adaptive data governance to identify and streamline data data management workflows by understanding the flow of data through different systems, processes, and departments. What that means is that they can optimize their data management workflows to reduce redundancy, eliminate errors, and reduce the time it takes to process data. So going back to some of those bits where people are using um, or wasting time in other areas. We also look at automation as well, and that's really quite key. So adaptive data governance can also help to automate certain aspects of data management, such as data cleaning or data validation. This can also reduce the burden on staff and improve the accuracy and consistency of the data. I mean, that's just some, but Roberto, when, when you've been talking to customers, what else have you seen? Yeah, well... Another important aspect is the standardization. Again, think yeah. different systems, different data ecosystems that they need to talk the same language. So mm -hmm. the ability to, to standardize the, the, the formats and the meaning of data across different, across different platforms and not, and not only standardizing the way that data transfer the map across platforms is a huge has a huge positive impact uh, in helping people and department talk the same language and understand each other. And then last but not least, as Steve mentioned earlier, that lineage is, is you know, the capability of watching visually what happens to your data, where they come from, what are the toll gates they pass through to, to check the quality and improve the quality possibly is really a huge, a huge service and success factor for the 
data governance initiative. It's something that everyone is asking for and, and really helps everyone doing better their, their job. So I want to turn now and, and take a look, I guess, at some at some what the new opportunities are that can come from adaptive data governance. For example, I guess, how can it capitalise on new areas of growth or how can it make services more user centric, um, which is something obviously we're hearing more and more about at the moment. Um, I guess, yeah, which Alberto, perhaps I'll come to you first, but what is the direction kind of you're seeing in government services? Kind of Where are they headed, would you say? Well, yeah, the, the new opportunities for any organisation and, and public and government government organizations particularly are basically starting from improving their data quality. Everyone, the first reaction when they think about we need to do something for our data or, or about our data is they think about data quality. It's, it's a sort of, you know, Pavlov reaction in everybody's mind, right? Improve data quality, reduce errors, and enhance the efficiency of the data management processes. All these things come together. The quality doesn't come out like uh, from a black box magically. It requires the governance around it, right? It requires people that is knowledgeable about data, their meaning, what is supposed to be their quality, and when it's not there, where to fix or look for the problem. So overall, a better understanding of the data assets is really a key success factor. And, and another one is that having this treasure of data well mapped, well connected, well understood, and qualitatively accurate, then, then you can start capitalizing on this uh, treasure and, and creating new areas of growth. So new, new opportunities for innovation, for data-driven innovation. So think about all the new services that are coming out from et cetera. Um, I keep on thinking about smart cities is that, but anything that we receive as a citizen is new, is coming from this uh, process. But also everyone is talking about uh, artificial intelligence and, and Steve mentioned, uh, mentioned that earlier. So if you want to really leverage this new technology, then you really need to master your data, you know, from end, end to end, basically. Otherwise you risk to produce wrong outputs. And mm -hmm. as I said, the, what, what in the business uh, they used to call customer experience, uh, we, we call it citizen experience. So the ability to provide with new services, more user separate, well, better tailored to the single uh, to the single user and, and customer or citizen. Sorry about that. And um, yeah, I think all these are the opportunities that comes out from a good data uh, management and data governance. Uh, there's something to add to that, Sam, as well, and something that's coming up more and more. And I mentioned it previously, which means that government departments are talking to us a lot about the possibility of sharing data across their particular platforms. Who knew government departments would start talking to each other? But we're finding that quite a lot, that other departments want to know what data they've got mm -hmm. and they could share that data across as long as it's in a controlled and governed manner. And we're getting a lot of questions in that space about how adaptive data governance can support that. Yeah, obviously there's clearly a lot of opportunities. It's just about kind of getting it right, I guess, um, is key. Um, so yeah, I guess we've talked about some of the opportunities Opportunities. We've talked about some of the challenges. Interested to know how government departments can really measure the effectiveness of their adaptive data governance. So what metrics they should be using to track progress over time, I guess. Yeah, and that's a great question because actually it can be quite challenging to measure how data adaptive data governance is being used. But there are a few metrics you can look at to progress over time. And I kind of think we should separate this into internal and external KPIs. But let's talk about the internal ones. So the internal ones to think about. So the first one we can think about is data quality metrics. We've discussed that. You can measure metrics such as completeness, accuracy of the data, consistency, and timeliness of the data as when you start looking at that. Data usage, you can measure by tracking the number of data requests that have been received. So we spoke about that marketplace for data. How often is that data being requested and audit that? How many number of data, data sets are being shared and the number of data related queries that are being handled as part of it? Some interesting metrics there. Data security. This can be measured by the number of data breach potentially that have come through, although I hope there would be none in the UK uh, government space, but obviously we know that some do occur occasionally. You can look at some of the uh, pen testing that's going on to show some of the unauthorized access attempts that are going on as part of it, or the level of completion with the data security regulations that we've got existing out there. You've also got things like process efficiency. You can sort of look at this and measure it by tracking the time taken to process data requests, the number of errors and and ex exceptions encountered during the data processing and the level of automation in the data management processes. And then, of course, the one, another one to think about is performance metrics. These metrics can be measured by 
the efficiency and effectiveness of the data management process. Examples could include the time it takes to process data requests, the number of data related issues that are being reported, and how long it does actually take to resolve them. So some of the, there's some of the ones I would look at. Do you think you've got anything to add to this, Alberto? No, absolutely. And I totally agree with your approach, internal and external metrics, because the internal metrics are those able to support your your data governance programs and 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 you know measure the way that you're improving the overall efficiency of your system internally but then from outside what does the citizen or the user sees these are also metrics that can be measured so I'm, i can think about the the service delivery speed and accuracy uh so so by measuring the speed and the accuracy of the service the department can determine if they're adaptive data governance programs are helping really to improve the quality and efficiency of cities and services, right? And, and then the customer satisfaction, of course, we are all invited to, to, to reply to customer satisfaction surveys. And that's, there's a reason behind that because every organization, they want to really check, post check if what they're doing is perceived uh, as good as, as, as they think they are, right? So that, that's another important aspect. And then of course, also reduce errors and reworks because the deficiency is, is as an impact inside and outside the organizations. Whenever you need to rerun some process, you will need to re-involve uh, your, uh, your end customer or the citizen in this case. And then of course, the data quality is something that everyone is able to perceive or to sense. So you can measure it accurately internally, but from outside, if, if my name is, is mis misspelled or uh, uh, poorly addressed by my inbox, mailbox, then, then it's something that I can really feel a bit, uh, not, uh, that, like, okay, what's behind that? Why are they having mm -hmm. it wrong? And then last but not least is the compliance, the way they, they're using data, the way a public service is using my data really makes me happy or unhappy if in, in the opposite case. So this is a really, a really things that we can measure and and it's also part of the communication. I think that uh, the government organization that they can publish yearly reviews of, of how they're doing and the way they're improving these uh, these factors and you know, so, some way promote their services more mm. and more through the good use of data. Yeah, really useful to see how those how those how progress can actually be measured, and also useful to kind of hear how you can divide those up into uh, external and internal metrics. Really interesting. Um, but what are the benefits, I guess, of using Informatica's adaptive data governance solutions? Um, it'd be great perhaps to hear some some examples of, of how they've successfully implemented yeah, Informatica's solutions. If you could perhaps give us a bit of flavour on, on some of those examples. Yeah, and this is always an interesting one, Sam, because obviously, while we can't discuss specific accounts due to the privacy of those accounts, I am happy to put people in touch with each other. One thing I've learned is UK government accounts do talk to each other and they share information. And this event that we're coming to on uh, next week will actually allow customers within the public sector space to share. So there are a number of government departments using Informatica at the event. So come along, see Alberto and myself, and we'll put you in touch with those customers. But just to look at some of the benefits that the departments are finding by using the Informatica solution, they're, well, they're numerous. Firstly, we've got a number of customers that are, are using the solution to improve data quality, which is critical for business dis for dis decision making and providing accurate and timely um, services to citizens. It can also help increase efficiency in data management processes, reduce error, redundancies, and improve collaboration across the departments which we're finding happening quite a lot departments are talking to each other much more now we're actually helping a number of departments as well to provide a comprehensive view of the data across um, different systems applications and databases enabling a historic holistic approach to data management this can be especially useful for government departments that have complex data environments or are wanting to take advantage of cloud technologies. We've mentioned, and I say cloud technologies because uh, we've got a number of customers within the public sector space that might want to put data on Azure. They also might want to put it on AWS. And some are even using Google as part of that too. Imagine trying to manage that across mm -hmm. a government department. 
other things that we can think about, and for example, data quality and data sharing are critical components of data interoperability in government and public sector spaces. Data quality ensures that data is accurate, complete, and consistent across different systems and the different departments, which is essential for making informed decisions and providing high quality services to its citizens. Data sharing, on the other hand, allows different departments and agencies to exchange data and collaborate more effectively, which can lead to better outcomes. And what we're finding is the Informatica platform that we, we're talking about here is really great at being able to enable departments for data sharing through its comprehensive suite of data management and data governance solutions that we've spoken about before. And are there other things that you've been looking at as well, Alberto, in the background? Could you add to that? Well, I think I think you said it all. Well, what we've been discussing so far is that in terms of data sharing, inf Informatica data integration solution enable organizations basically to integrate different and disparate sources, manage data access, security and compliance, and improve data interoperability. And then I think every organization in the world is looking for these three big achievements, big uh, big pillars you now in the way they operate. So in conclusion, we are also looking up to, to, to setting a, 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 you know, a data governance uh, for a public sector workshop to discuss more in detail all these aspects and listen from, from the field what are their needs and expectation and the state of art. But in any case, we have already good starting points. One is Come to the round table next week, everyone, and introduce yourself and let's start triggering this conversation. Join one of our data governance webinars and seminars that are anyway out there and the best practices are common, whether it's government, you know, business, private business sector, etc. And also we have put in place a bit more elaborate CDO Academy for those who really want to study the science behind data governance uh, and, and the, you know, the, the processes, operating models, uh, best practices that uh, translate these good ideas into, into, into practice. So we all look forward to meeting you all on uh, the 11th of May in London next week. Lovely stuff. Yeah, no, um, no, really looking forward to the event. And again, we can delve into some of these topics a little bit deeper on the day. Um, should be should be a good time. But no, thank you both again for coming on the podcast today. And yeah, and for sharing your insights. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. It's been a pleasure.